Let's turn now to former Senator Doug Jones, Democrat of Alabama, who voted to convict Donald Trump in the first impeachment trial, what the senator called a vote of conscience. It's a vote that certainly didn't help him keep his job at the last election. He's now a distinguished senior fellow at the Center for American Progress. Uh, thank you for being here, Senator. You joined other former Democratic senators yesterday in making a public plea that meaningful reform to Senate rules is necessary if the filibuster is to continue and if the Senate is to properly function, especially to protect free and fair elections. I also just cited a September 2020 Atlantic article that showed that this is an evolution for you. You've changed on this. What is it about Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema that they just will not budge on this issue, even if everyone else has? You, Klobuchar, Tester, Heitkamp. Well, you know, look, Matty, let me, let me explain a couple of things. First of all, there are certain things I really haven't changed that much on. I'm still very, very reluctant to uh, completely eliminate of the filibuster. I, I worked as a staffer in the United States Senate in the late 70s when that filibuster was used sparingly. It was used in a way that uh, created that bipartisanship. And I've been reluctant to do that, uh, to completely eliminate what that uh, op-ed, what the piece in Medium called for and what I have advocated for a long, long time, probably even before I got in the Senate, was a change in rules. It is absurd to require a 60-vote threshold on every piece of legislation where you just phone in an objection, you go about your business, and yeah. you don't have a real filibuster. Remember, the filibuster was designed not to obstruct, but to give the uh, minority a voice. And if you can change those rules, as we advocated in our piece, change those rules and give the minority a voice in amendments and a voice in the legislation, I think we could get this voting rights thing done. I really believe that without eliminating completely. But we got to change the rules. We have to change the rules. So, Senator, let me very well put, let me re ask my question. And I, I mean, I, I would go beyond you. I would get rid of the filibuster across the board because I think sure. it's mad that you can't get immigration done, you can't get gun control done every time a simple majority cannot get stuff done. But let's put that argument to one side, an argument for another day. You and I both agree at minimum a voting rights exception. Why won't Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema see that? That's a modest change. Why not even do that to save our democracy? Yeah, I, I, I can't really answer. I would do, that's the one thing I certainly would do. I really believe that a carve out for voting rights is very important. You know, and in that sense, I, I talked the other day about the fact that, you know, there are so many people that bled, that died for voting rights in this country. There are so many members of our military that fought across the, the world uh, and died uh, for, to pretend the dem for, uh, to protect the democracy we have and that freedom to vote. They weren't there to protect a filibuster, a Senate rule. And I, I believe, personally, I would carve out that and let the chips fall where they're going to fall for down the road. Make no mistake, Mitch McConnell will use that carve out to carve out other things going on. And that is a fear that I think Senator Sinema has and Senator Manchin. But at the end of the day, I think protecting democracy is a lot more important at this point. So that carve out for this incredibly piece, important piece of legislation, I think would work. But I'd like to see the rules change, too. I really think that, that if the Senate but, is going to start functioning, you got to change those rules. But given that Manchin and Cinema are not budging, they haven't budged for over a year, uh, no matter what pressure has been applied, they're not moving. Where do we go from here? Does that mean it's done? Does that mean states like yours, Alabama, which have had a lot of voter suppression bills pitched by Republicans in that state, does that mean you're on your own? You know, I, I think that it may be done for a time, but I don't think anybody should ever give up hope. I think everybody should continue to work. We were seeing just in the last couple of days where uh, votes have been being rejected for the silliest of reasons. And I think the more people see that that's happening, the more likelihood that we can get folks to change their mind. But I, I, I'm not going to give up hope. There is no question that we've got to continue to work on this. We've got to continue to stand up, speak out, do what John Lewis said, cause a little good trouble. But we're not going to give up hope. This is far too important. But there are other things that we can do. Again, and I know I'm, I sound like a broken record here, but there's more that has to be done in the Senate of the United States to fix that body. John Tester nailed it. It is a dysfunctional body. It is not the great deliberative body. And there needs to be a wholesale look at the rules of the Senate in order to accomplish things that the majority can pass yeah. with minority input.
And as Amy Klobuchar, your former colleague, pointed out this week, there have been 160 changes to Senate rules on closing yes. debates on filibuster uh, over the last 200 plus years. And yet Joe Manchin stands and says, no, we've done it all this time. We've done it for 232 years. He said the other day there wasn't a filibuster 232 years ago. So I don't know how you budge this guy's mind when he's even making up information about the history of the Senate. Let me ask you a broader question. At his press conference this afternoon, Joe Biden cited the Republican governor of New Hampshire who said he would not be running for the Senate because Republicans Republicans, his fellow Republicans told him they plan to obstruct for the next two years, and he doesn't want to be a roadblock. He wants to get stuff done. Senator McConnell admitted today that GOP has no agenda heading into the midterms. They're just going to make it a referendum on the Democrats, who they're going to keep on obstructing. They're not hiding that stuff. They're saying it out loud. Surely the Democrats can find a way to capitalize on this, can't they? Why is it your party always seems to adopt this defensive posture in the face of a brazenly aggressive and obstructionist GOP? We adopt that posture because we use their language. We, we don't frame our messages the way that we should be. We, yes. we don't frame the messages that, that focus on the kitchen table issues, that focus on real people. We ignore that. We talk about, we go off on tangents. And we've got to do a much better job of trying to message and getting forward to, to the American people. We got to go where people are. We got to understand that too. We can't go there basically tell them that we know better uh, about what you need and what you want than you do. We got to go where they are and what their beliefs are and work with that. There's so much of this that is cultural. There's so much that's moral that people see. And we've got to do a much better job. We've got to get a focus out there. And, and it's very difficult because, quite frankly, the radical right has be, built this platform over the last 20 or 30 years where they are constantly bombarding people every day with messages, a lot of which today are just based on falsehoods. But Democrats have to work this 24-7 every day yeah. of the year and not just and wait till election time. Well said. As I mentioned at the outset, you stood your ground uh, in 2020. You voted to convict Trump in the first trial. Some say it helped cost you your Senate seat in red Alabama. But you also cast some votes to upset a lot of Democrats, a lot of liberals. You were one of only three Democrats with Cinema and Manchin to vote to confirm Bill Barr as attorney general. You were one of only seven Democrats to vote to confirm Mike Pompeo as secretary of state. Given Barr and Pompeo are now widely considered to be the worst occupants of those jobs in modern American history, do you regret those two Senate votes of yours? I you know, it's interesting that you bring that up because I have long since said that if I had to votes to do over in my three years, those would be at the top of the list. I was very disappointed in, in uh, Attorney General Barr. I was disappointed in Secretary uh, Pompeo. Uh, those would be at the top of the list. You know, people make uh, judgments at the time, and I made a, a, a judgment. But I, I think the fact that we need to start looking at all of these nominees that come forward, uh, the way the process is built, you really don't get a chance sometimes to really dig down deep and do the things. We say that they are, but those were yeah. two that I, I regretted. But at the, I say regretted. I didn't regret them at the time. Looking back on them, sure, I would have changed that vote. Fair enough. Appreciate that. Last quick question. We're out of time, but I got to ask. Joe Biden was asked today at his press conference in the White House whether he and Kamala Harris will be running again together in 2024, and he said yes. Do you really believe Joe Biden is going to run for re-election aged 83 and serve out a full term till 87? Well, look, you're not going to get me to second guess the president on his uh, political agendas right now. I'm not going to question that. I've known Joe for 40 plus years now. I, the first time I met him in 1978, I thought he would be a great president. I still think that he is doing a great job, and I think he's going to be a very, very, very good president. So we'll see how this goes uh, with him. I know right now he's got an agenda that he has to get forward, and that's his position, and he's going to stick to it. I suspected you would say that, but I had to ask. Senator Doug Jones, thank you for your time this evening. Appreciate you taking time out. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen. And make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.